All right, so in this presentation today, I would like to cover two parts. One is uh, monastic education, especially general information about Kaolong, the school where you are going to. And another one is general information about Myanmar and some famous places and what you can do at home, actually. So um, Kaolong is, as I told you before, the school where you are going to, and which is located in Mandalay, City. Mandalay is the second largest city of Myanmar. And monastic school. So I would like to give you a brief history of monastic school. What does it mean by that? So in Myanmar, there are three um, different education services. One is monastic schools, and another one is public school, like government school, and another one is private sector. So monastic schools are non profit schools and they mainly help poor children who cannot go to government school. Historically, it plays in a very important role because of helping poor children. And to go to mon government school, we have to, we have to pay fees and we have to buy books and other things. So many people, the poor people, cannot afford, you know. So they come to monastery school where they don't need to pay any for any fees. Yeah, so monastery schools are historically really important in Myanmar education. Um, so Hongkong is one of them. And yeah, it is one of the two largest high schools in Myanmar. So you will be going and seeing and working or you know, volunteering in the, one of the really big schools. Yeah, so the vision of Hangdong is only two things. One is to provide free education. Even though it is free, we would like to provide quality education to everybody, you know. We don't have any cr criteria to come to Hangdong. Everybody, no, no matter what religion they are in, or they believe in, or what races they are, we don't care, they can come to Hangdong. Uh, we would like to provide quality education and free education to everybody. So this is our vision. And you will see our team. This is the school building. This is really new one. And those are the key members of the staff of Hong There are about 400 staff. But not only um, there are other staff like admin staff, clinic, and there are also other uh, trainings, like vocational training, uh, tailoring class, computer class. So uh, not all are teachers, other staff as well. So there are about 400 staff in the condo, in that school. And some of them will be monks, and some of them will be nuns, and some of them will be like lay person, like lay person. So, you know, it is mixed culture. Why do why should you come to Pound? Oh sorry, before I go to uh, why you should come, I would like to tell you the history. Yes, yeah, yeah that's okay. Yeah. The history of Pound. And it was founded in 1993 and it was started with very small students and very small uh, teachers and it was like edu uh, primary level. But um, gradually it was expanded um, because the principal of the school was really, really um, very eager to help poor children. And after the primary, the, the, the children who study or who already finished primary school, they didn't know where to go. They, because they couldn't afford to go to another um, private school or government school. So the principal wanted to upgrade his, his school. So in this way, he could expand the school up to high school in 2004, oh, in 2003, yes. And he connected with Japan or Australia or other international organization. And then he got funding from them and there were lots of buildings, new buildings as you saw before in the picture. Yeah, there are lots of new buildings and um, the school became really big and with you know, six, about 6,000 students. 
and the students are varied. The number of the students are varied year by year um, because of the limitation of limitation of the spaces and limited of the teachers. We have to we cannot accept more than not more than six thousand students. But how many are really there, sorry? How many are really, really there? What's the number that is really is it really uh, six thousand? About no, uh, because there are other affiliated to schools, okay. you know. So, uh, in reality, it can be about four thousand. Four thousand. Okay. Yeah. So Carl was saying that it's yeah. up to nine thousand. Is that? I think it is including affiliated schools. Okay. Not in the school compound. Right. Yeah. Okay. So in Pongo itself, it can be four thousand students. So it's still quite a significant number of yeah. students. So. Why should you come to Pongo? What do you think? Because it is really, really one of the, the main reasons why you should come to Pongo is it is a multi cultural environment. Meaning in Myanmar, do you know that we have different tribes? Oh, there are. Within Myanmar, even it's uh, you know, there are different tribes who or we speak different languages. The main or official language is Myanmar or Bamis. Before we call Bamis, now we change you know, Myanmar because it was named by Yiddish. So the government or the official, um, they wanted to change the name as Myanmar as we are independent country. So yeah, uh, the official language is Myanmar, but there are also different ethnic city and who, they speak different languages and they have their own tradition and customs and uh, you know costumes. So, in that country, uh, sorry, in that school, you will see lots of students who are coming from different parts of Myanmar and they will speak their own language uh, apart from the school time. And then they will wear their traditional dress on, you know. So this is really interesting to see how people share their culture and how they learn. So I think you will also learn from them by seeing different different tribes and different language. And it is also really, really friendly society and there will be lots of people who are very kind and very supportive and very helpful um, and very friendly as well. So you can ask for any help or, you know, even the students, the students will be really, really friendly. So you will be shocked, I think. <laughs> and they will also behave really well because um, in Myanmar, hierarchy, hierarchy, sorry for my pronunciation, you know, that ranky is very important. So the teachers have lots of respect from the students. So you may find it a little bit difficult to encourage them to ask questions because we traditionally do not speak up a lot. So. Um, you have to encourage them to ask questions, lots of questions to you. Yeah. And I think we skip one oh, slide here before. Want to go back? Yeah. That one? Oh, no. Second one. Yeah, yeah that one. Yep. So in Pongo, another interesting point is there are different programs. Um, since 2005, that I, as I told you before, we would like to provide quality education. So we implemented or we used um, traditional method, meaning teacher is if teacher was in charge of the classroom or learning, and we didn't encourage child uh, thinking skill or promoting critical thinking skill, uh, questioning skill, uh, you know that type of uh, problem solving skill. That type of skills we don't encourage them a lot. But since 2009 or 2005, we wanted to use new approach, which means uh, encouraging children to participate in learning more and to be creative and to be innovative or something like that. So we wanted to use different approach. So we are trying to implement a new methods called child-centered learning, which you will be familiar with. And so, for this respect, we have different programs, even in, in, in the same school. We call that FG classes, and normal classes, and NDDC classes, which means 
in FD department, the class size will be smaller and the student will be taught, yes, will be taught in interactive methods and with, you know, small number of students and teacher can give really full attention to students and we can focus on different schools, students and needs. What kind of size are we talking about? Sorry, it's um, it can be about school. only 30, the highest number can be 35. 35? Yeah, or 35, yes. But whereas in normal class size, the highest number can be 50. So, like this one, this is in normal class size. So in this, we want to we want to provide equal opportunity to everybody, but because of the you know uh, situation of the school, um, at the moment it is not possible for everybody to provide smaller sizes and you know uh, with full facilities of using interactive methods. So, but at the same time, we also wanted to. Um, promote their thinking skill at least, you know. We don't want them encourage. we don't want to encourage group learning system anymore. Because after school, when you leave, leave the school, you don't remember anything. Mm. Can I the, the do you, do you guys learning, know what Swayze so. means by rote learning? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, we also want to give opportunity to those uh, students. So, we have to find the answer how we are going to solve this problem with this number of students and there is not much space and only one teacher is there so we are still finding the solutions. So this is one plus site and this is what I what I said before, this is uh, FG plus plus track. So it means that we would like to um, experiment. We would like to do experiment on new methods that we believe in, how much it can be effective for children learning. So, so that looks a bit more like the Australian classroom yes. situation. Yeah. So you can, when you come, you can either take this class or if you would like to see this class, you can also take it. I think maybe we'll throw them into both environments. Yeah, I <laughs> think so. Different experience, you know. Yeah. You will learn a lot with, yeah. with, with your students. Yeah. So the last, yeah, the last point of why you should come to Pardo is your contribution will be really, really appreciated and really valued because, as I told you before, we are in the experiment pace and we need a lot, lot of uh, skills teachers and, and you can, even though you go in the classroom, anyway, you are also help with the local teachers who really want to learn from you, who would like to share the education with you. Uh, what do you mean by what is education? Or what is your point on education? How should we teach? What does it mean by quality education? That type of things you can uh, just get with them. And the local teachers, you can communicate with them in English. They can speak English. Many of them can speak English. And so they are very, very happy to learn from you because this is really, really good opportunity and rare opportunity for us. Because in our uh, country at the moment, in Pondo, we get teacher training, a uh, very short course. Maybe it can be about one month course. But as you know, education is really, really wide area, or very wide aspect. So one month training is not enough for us. So we need to upgrade our skills and knowledge if we would like to provide quality education. So we need to see education from different point of view and we have to you know, communicate with people who are coming from different systems in order to make our service better. So that's why we are very happy or very um, really welcome to you. And yes, because of that, you will also learn from us at least you will learn our culture. You will learn from students, from teacher, from local as well. Uh, apart from the school time, you can go out and you can explore locals. And locals are very, very friendly, and you can speak to them. You can learn from them as well. So we both can be um, can be 
privilege, you know, for your visit. So those are the reasons why you can come, why you should come to Pangdong. And in that photo, in that photo, they are called nuns, and very small little nuns. They may come from different parts of Myanmar, especially uh, from a conflict area, because Myanmar is um, before, not now, before there was a conflict between minority groups. And because of that, those students who are coming from this area, they, don't, they did not have access to education because of the conflict. So where where the parents, is that name? It where is uh, up Myanmar? Myanmar and the border area of Myanmar. Yeah. So, so in relation to Mandalay? Uh, it's far from Mandalay. But yeah, I've traveled far. a long way. Yeah, yeah. So the parents want them to be educated person, so they send their children when they were very young. So you will see really young children who are coming uh, far from their home mm -hmm. and with nobody uh, but they have teachers like that. So and where do they live? Where do they live? Pardon? Where do they live? They live in school compound. Yeah, school compound. Some of them, um, especially for the kids, we school provide food and shelter. Um, but for boys, they have to end up they have to do novices and they can go in the morning, they can go in the community and they can get, they can collect food because um, do you, I don't know how much you know about Buddhist. Um, if somebody is Buddhist monk, the neighbors and usually donate food to the monks. So it is so they can collect what, the food. What does he mean by lay person? Okay, so the, the yeah, so the non yeah. Yeah, lay person means like you and me and you. Yeah, so they can collect food for okay. themselves. And then in the daytime, they go to school, you know. But for the girls, uh, for men, they don't go out in the early morning, so the school provides. Yeah, so yeah, this is where you're coming to. Am I inside of the car? Yes. <laughs> And yeah, there are some rules that um, should be should you should also know. Like the school is non smoking area, so in the school compound we don't smoke and smoking is prohibited. And for the uh, clothing, um, we have for local teachers, we have our uniform. Everybody have to wear uniform within school time. It is um, white top and green, green longi. It is long one, uh, but for you, uh, you don't need you don't need to wear. If you want to try, you can. Um, but we prefer you to wear a long one, or yes, which is um, so <laughs> you can read this one. So yeah, that's. So I think it's uh, how, how do the teachers get those uniforms? I'm just thinking. I'm wondering. Ooh, if we or can, it's, well, can we get access to those uniforms if people want to wear them? How do we, what do we need to Oh, uh, we can buy, yes. Okay. We can buy, yeah. That would be, yeah, right. yeah so that's okay. Um, it's not that. expensive as well. Not oh, expensive. Okay, right. Well, that might be the easier mm -hmm. way and it will mean that they will fit into the community uh -huh. um, a bit better if they're wearing the same yeah. uniform. Yeah, yeah. It will be really lovely with uniform, you know. Mm -hmm. Top, top, uh, white top and green one, green longi. We call it longi. Um, yes. And for Hagi, yeah, the monks sometimes are okay, but for the principal, like principal or really in the top one, we don't usually hug them, but we will hand make sh handshake. Uh, for the uh, female to, um, how to say, for guests to guests, is it, it is okay to hug, but for girls and boys, we don't do that, you know, so, yeah. And I think when you come, um, normally, in the daytime, it is a bit hot. You will find it cold, but for us, it's cold because it is winter. We are so winter. It can be about uh, 28 or 25 or some, but at nights and a bit in the early morning, it can be really cold, about 15. Mm -hmm. 
It was bottomless money. Yes, right here. Yes, yes, yes. But according to the weather forecast, um, it was predicted that this winter can be really cold. I'm not sure how cold will it be. I will keep you posted um, when the you know announcement is made. What, what about humidity at that time of the year? Humidity is less. Yeah. No, very humid okay. at that time. Yeah. So don't worry. I think you come the right time. So it's a really popular time. And pick a time. That's so why we've already booked support. the flights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you if you would like to have, you would like you can bring the cotton winds, which are a bit light and yeah. So all right. Uh, you can also try the matriculation address. I mean, um, not necessarily need to wear um, school uniform, but you should. You can try. Uh, I will show you somebody who tried already. So this is from the school. This girl, I don't know whether you can see in the middle. Uh, she is she is a visitor and see she wear this one. This is called longji, and this is top. You know we wear, we used to wear like long sleeve like this. And then another one for men. Yes, this is how you wear, mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can try. It's like a sarong. Pardon? Like a salon. Yeah, like yeah. a salon, yes. Yeah. 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 Have you tried that before? Salon? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you do? So I, I think you may be familiar with that. All right. So you, there'll be plenty of people to help you get, yeah. you know, figure it out initially. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry to fall off. You can it wear falls belt. Off, what? You, can, <laughs> <laughs> you can wear belt. And as, uh, but, uh, yeah, it can be the same for girls as well. But the, for the girls, there is tie, you know, so that you can tie yourself. So, yeah. And um, yeah, that's the session about Pangro information in general. So, if you do have any questions so far before I move to general information about BMR. Yeah? Yes. I was just going to ask, um, are the, are not all the classes are taught in English, like are some of yeah. them. So, I think after the last one, just taught English and they taught like in the area. Uh, yes, all the classes are not taught in English, but first track class and NDTC classes are taught in English. So you can take those classes. But if you would like to teach the normal class size, uh, teachers will be interpreter or teacher will assist you. So you can stay free. Okay. Even though children cannot respond to you really, you know, very fast and very well, but you can they can stay understand because um, there are lots of visitors and they have much exposure of listening to English. So, um, yeah. so the, the language is called Myanmar. Yes. Yeah, not yeah. Bur don't call it Burmese. We don't call okay. it anymore. Burmese. Okay. It used to be called okay. Burmese. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the different classrooms, what's like the, the range of subjects they teach? What areas? Oh, what the area? Yeah. Oh, we have. Um, six subjects main, mainly um, mathematics, science, literacy, literacy means Myanmar, you know, but Myanmar language, and uh, mathematical and uh, uh, history, geography. History and geography we teach different separately. We don't call human, human, humanities. Yeah, humanities. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so history, geography, and uh, English. So six subjects. And then is there some arts? Yeah, that's, um, that's something that we really want to introduce. And we introduce to FG classes, classes about art and drawing and painting and, you know, singing and dancing, and, you know. Um, but in mainstream, we don't have art classes yet. Mm -hmm. and, but um, I think since 2010, there, is, there was also a new program called, you know, teaching arts in government school as well. But they start with primary school. So, yeah, and, and we'll be able we to can. provide you with some examples of curriculum documents for both the primaries and the various method areas mm -hmm. um, before you come over. Yeah. yeah. Before you go over, sorry. So, uh, back to your question, you know, 
it will be really interesting to see if you can teach history with Thai standard practices. You know, we are trying to try to promote children's critical thinking in program solving skills. So we, it is really hard to teach those subjects, um, you know, to be interactive and children normally get bored when they are taught in, you know, passive learning. Like they are sitting and we explain them and they get really, really bored and they thought, oh, history are boring, or geography are boring. But yeah. It will be really interesting if you can, you know, arrange some lessons which can be really, um, how do you say, engage to children. Yeah, it will find it really interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I asked you, um, are we going to be paired with one mentor teacher, or are we going to be sort of looking at the school? It depends on you how you would like to manage. I don't know. Um, how you decide. Yeah. It, it, well, it would be good to. We usually do pair them with um, like one main, one or two main ones, mm -hmm. and then we get them to observe a range. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll be probably trying to follow that kind of model if it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it'll be, it's a bit of a negotiation with the school, yeah. as well as um, mm -hmm. you know what what the school can offer as well, what the school can do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. In in our what we usually do is when the volunteer teacher or um, yeah, the placement teacher come, um, they will be local teacher, one local teacher who will be helping you, know, you uh, in terms of language or in terms of resources. And yeah, this teacher also will observe your teaching and she, he or she wants to learn how you teach, for example, history or how you teach geography or how you teach art, you know? Yeah. So there will be local teachers who will be also working with you. And we'll also have ACU staff who will be observing mm -hmm. you as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the ACU staff will be doing the assessment. Who's going? Uh, Marg Carswell from Ballarat and we're currently advertising for a national, someone in the national system. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll know that person soon. Yeah. As okay. well as me for so a couple of weeks. Yep. No more questions? All right, so let's move to another part, and that can be also a conclusion. <laughs> and these are some very, very famous places in Myanmar, uh, especially this one is very close to Pago. So you can go, this This is called Mandalay Hill, and you can go there um, after school, and you can walk there. It is like 15 minutes walk from Pago, so it's not far. And you can also see Okay, and this um, Mandalay city it is really rich in culture because it was the last, uh, there was, how do you call it? Let me put in the sentence, sorry. Um, the last kingdom was located in Mandalay. So you will see the palace, the palace in Mandalay. So this is mm. moat and inside is the palace. And there is Mandalay Hill at the near opposite of the palace. So when you go up to the hill, you will see the landscape of the uh, palace and you know, the city itself. And you will also see the, the river, which is called Inyawi River, and the longest river of Myanmar. And then you will also see really beautiful sunset. So everybody, you know, I hardly find somebody who doesn't like watching sunset. Might have to Mandalay go up there as a group one night yes. and just sit there and go, oh! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah so Mandalay is, yeah, this Mandalay, yeah, see sunset is really, really peaceful and very beautiful. And then this is another one, it's called Hubei Bridge, and the longest wooden bridge in the world. Yes, so uh, you can also see sunset there, and it's also really beautiful. So I have seen it only one when I took my friend who is coming from Germany and I was amazed and surprised. Oh my God, I didn't know that how much beautiful that view <laughs> is because it's not special for us, you know. <laughs> but that time was so special. Yeah, very beautiful. So you can go, but that one is a bit far. Uh, so on Saturday or Sunday, you can go there and there are many other places, you know. 
um, but I just you know, post only one or two because I don't want to take long time. Uh, this is traditional traditional dish. One is called this is called tea leaf salad. Um, do you know tea leaf? Tea, yes, you tea, drink yeah, tea, yeah. right? You drink tea, but we make salad. <laughs> Isn't it weird? <laughs> yeah, we make salad. Uh, but it is very, very beautiful and very rich flavor. I hope you like it. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it depends on how much you, what you like. You can put the ingredients. If you are allergic to prawns, it's okay. You don't need to put prawns. But we like Kobe shrimp. We make one shrimp, which will be lots of flavor. And peanuts or uh, beans, fried beans. And we make this is very fresh. And yeah, you have you have a chance to try because uh, it is called tea leaf and it is very special for us. And every occasion, or even if you visit to other house, like me, like look my house, and you will see tea leaf on the table. So every house will have tea leaf. That's our real traditional dish, and this one is from breakfast. But you may find it a bit weird <laughs> to have soup in the morning. So this is noodle soup, and if you don't like fish, then no, I think it is fish soup, so we cannot, we cannot eat. Yeah, I don't think there is vegetarian soup. <laughs> who are vegetarian? Is there a vegetarian uh, who don't like uh, fish? Yes, <laughs> that's close. I know one famous place of this Mohinga. You know, not every shop is good, even though this is traditional. So I will take you the best one. <laughs> oh, this is your task now. <laughs> Some basic Myanmar language. So, uh, local people want to hear. So, if somebody, I mean, want to. Yeah, I want to hear you speaking Burmese, and they will, they will laugh. But it doesn't mean they don't like you. They <laughs> like you, and they they sound you sound really cute. So <laughs> really, really. So they can't help laughing. But it doesn't mean they make a joke or it doesn't mean right. So you need to see that we, that's that true. It is a bit different culture. If we like or if if somebody is really cute, we laugh. So, <laughs> but if somebody loves you, so it means you are cute. <laughs> yeah. So, hello is Minglava. Yes, yes. Very easy, right? Minglava. And how are you? Nigangla. 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 Yes, yes, correct. La. You know, this is like, see, I am doing road learning now. <laughs> So yeah, la la is in question. You know, whenever we ask question, but different context, we use la. And so with the intonation of that, so can you say that again? Nikang la. It goes down. Nikang la. Yes, go down. Nikang la. Whereas we would say, "How are you?" Yeah. Or "How are you?" Or yeah. Well, usually uh, we're supposed to have an intonation up at the end of the question, but then uh, we don't. I think we don't go yeah. up. Nikangla. Yeah, Nikangla. Yeah. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is good like this. Yeah. Yeah. So intonation-wise, with with the language, is it fairly flat? Yes. Or? Yeah. Nikangla. Yes. Um, yeah. That may be a little bit difficult. Um, Jama is for female. Jeno uh, is for me. So for me, you need to say Jeno. Sorry, can you tell it again? Jenno. Yeah. So K Y is pronounced J. Jack. Yeah. Jack. 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 Jack.
do we pronounce our names just the way we would? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So they were in the study. Okay. <laughs> yes. What's the pa? Pa is uh, oh. <laughs> pa doesn't have any Asian, just Andy one. Like like the way Japanese does. Yeah, and yeah. Thai as well. But uh, is it does it change depending on if you're speaking to someone of a higher status or anything like that? Um, or if you are a higher yes, status? Yes, if if we are talking to the monk, then we have to say, the man now man, so is in the Taya. Taya is what we call to the monk. Yeah. So yeah. But when if I turn if I turn myself to the government authorities or you know officials, I will say the man now man, so is in the So you know, mm. but this is generally. You can if you can say it to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. They'll, so. they'll forgive you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can write it Jama or Jalon. Mm -hmm. So this one can spell differently. So I don't know how you will spell because first um, it depends on individual how they hear and how they spell, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So this is how I spell. Jama <laughs> name. <laughs> Nice to meet you. This one we should try. Freyara. <laughs> so we we will stop here. Freyara. Freyara. One tabane. One tabane. Okay. Three 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 mean meet. Yeah. Yara. <laughs> Yara is really this part. Freyara. So meet. One tabane. Tapi. So yeah. We don't say use here. There is no use here. Three yada, one tabare. Three yada, one tabare. Yes, correct. Three yada, one tabare. So the last one is dead. 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 Three yada, one tabare. Three yada, one tabare. Yes, yes. So, yeah, I think you can say this. You can try this too. Yeah, so this is basic Myanmar language. And. Um, there are also famous places near by near Mandalay, and yeah, one is called Mingong, and there are lots of lots of historical places. Um, and there is world largest, uh, sorry, world top largest mill. Do you know? Do you understand? Mill. Mill. Yeah. B E L I. Yeah. 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 Bronze. Bronze mill. The world. Touch largest. Yeah, so you will see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, there is another one called Tianlun, and it is like Melbourne Botanical Zoo. So it's a bit similar to that, and it is also hilly region, and it is two hours drive away from Mandalay, and it is in hilly region. So if you don't feel cold enough in Mandalay, we will take you to Pyeongle where you can feel cold. So, because we want to make you as cold. So. <laughs> it can be as cold as never. Yeah, so. yeah, that's all for my presentation. If you have any questions or concerns, you can ask have me. any questions at this stage? Have a bit of a think. Um, so I read, I read online there's a lot of um, Chinese people in Mandalay. Yeah. So are they Chinese people? Is there Chinese students at the school or they tend to be in the private system? Um, Chinese, mainly, they are very rich. So yeah. they normally go to private or public school. Okay. Uh, but some Chinese are also in monastery school. Yeah. Because I will tell you the trick. <laughs> okay. uh, our school have to learn two shifts because there are lots of students. So we have to learn shift so if they come for the morning shift then they will have free time on the daytime then in the afternoon so they can go to you know their school like Chinese school or other things they can do other things what they would like to do so and do they, those students speak Myanmar? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So they they speak both languages? Yes. Yeah. Smart kids. Very very <laughs> smart yes. Uh, eight 
some normal classes, they run from 8.30 to 3.30, and they are two shifts. So the morning shift will finish at 12, and afternoon shift will start at 1 and 3.30. So the times have been different? Different kids. Okay, so you teach the same one? Different years. Different years, level, and different ages. Okay, so, and different ages. Okay, so, so not the same. Okay, yeah. Okay. yeah. But for FG and under DC, because they have very small number, so they need to run the whole day. Okay. Uh, it is from 9 to 4. Okay. Hmm. And other Friday? Yes, Monday to Friday. Oh, I think when you come, when you come, mm, it is not religious, not religious day. We, we have Saturday religious mass. So we have to close the close the school according to the religious calendar. So we call Sabbath day. Sabbath day is mm -hmm. so monks, obviously fast. Fast, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to close Sunday and that that fast day. But when you come, it's over. So we will run normally. Um, they are about 200. Okay. Mm. 200 students, uh, maybe in school compound. And they are also teachers like myself, is maybe also in school compound. So we have, we have, we are provided teachers do dormitory and students dormitory as well. So you mentioned that it was the second largest hospital. Yes. So does that mean there's generally not many schools in mm. Myanmar? So how many high schools would there be in Mandalay? Especially, um, uh, yeah, monastic school. Yeah. Especially for monastic school, yes. Yeah. Um, other monastic school are up to secondary. Sec oh, it, it is a bit confusing. We call secondary means up to grade nine. Okay. So yes, up to grade nine. But mainly they are only primary level. Right. So this one is high school. So it's up to year 12. Yeah. And another one is called Sally Monastic School. She, it went, that one is also high school, so only two monasteries. Yeah. No, the whole Myanmar. Country. Oh, yeah, okay. the whole country. Yeah. Yeah. So you have from what age? What's the youngest? From five or oh, six? From five preschool. Five, five, five year olds to uh, 16. 16. Five year old to 16 year old. 16 or 17. It depends on how many years they have to repeat. <laughs> 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 because we have, you know, pass fail system. Do you know that? If we don't pass grade six, then we have to repeat it again. So, that's not so hard. that that applies to the primary years as well, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, for primary, the grade five. It so applies grade to five. grade five. Yes. Not for grade three or grade two. Yes. Do most kids teach year twelve or some like in like in Malay not many people teach year twelve? Is it common? Um, Many go to many go to year uh, twelve, but they don't pass. The problem is because of the testing system, so they don't pass and they don't finish. They don't want to repeat again. So the dropout rate rate did in increase. Yeah. So I don't know the exact you know yeah. rate, yeah. but it basically significantly it increase because of the standardized test and they don't want to take it. School grades or primary school? The primaries will be in primary. Primary in school. Yep. Don't worry, we're not going to throw you into a <laughs> high school <laughs> class. I'm like trying to think through yeah. my no, high no, school no. grades coming. No, no, no. No, no, no. Not in high school. Uh, Any other questions? And we will, we will um, organise a like a Skype, or there'll also be more, like I said, cultural awareness, a bit more on languages. So um, don't worry if you have already completely forgotten what's raising said a minute ago. Um, just checking on this to make sure it's still recording. There you are. Hi. Gabe, do you have questions? Um, yeah, my question's more for uh, Oh, me? Yes. Um, in terms of like replacement in, in Australia, we do our AC lesson plans and then 
get a sense on those as well. Are we writing lesson plans similar to those for Yes, as well? yeah. So you'll be following the same kinds of templates um, and sharing those sharing those with the teachers and you know talking to them about the context you think this would be appropriate for these kids yeah. all of that all of those kinds of things we're going to have a lot of like dialogue between our me and our like assessment teacher right yeah we're not be yes yeah the, the ACU person <laughs> yes oh, yeah <laughs> so you've got no 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 you've got two two people who will be there full time during the day for you guys so i mean they won't be full time in your class yeah. because i've got to get around to 20 classes uh, but they'll be there all the time, yeah. And we'll be staying in the same. Oh, did you want to talk a bit about the accommodation where they'll be staying oh, in Mandalay? Um, yeah. Yeah. So you we'll be staying in the same place as you guys. Yeah. Um, but you will be stay in the guest house, so you will not be mixed with students or other teachers. So you will be by yourself, but it is in the school compound, and there is um, students' house nearby. And you can also talk to them if you have free time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so we, yeah. So the ACU staff will be there yeah. as well, so you can hassle mm -hmm. them as much as you want. <laughs> sometimes this is a bad point. I should say that. <laughs> uh, sometimes the electricity is cut off, so you it will be <laughs> great if you can bring the torch. Or, I mean, it won't be loud. It, it won't loud. It won't be loud. But you know, mm, it is good to have torch. Yes. <laughs> we'll make up. We might need to make up a little survival list of <laughs> what things you need to pack in your bag before. Yeah. 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 So we'll do that, and uh, that's that, that's well, it's not actually that far away now, is it? Five months. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Any other questions? Question. Excited? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it is really beautiful place, you know. Mm. Beautiful yeah. place. Beautiful people. Beautiful food. Yes. That's yeah. gonna be awesome. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much for that Thank you very much. Thank you everybody for coming. Mingalava.